Hello, Kerry here. I fancied doing a watercolour. I've got this scrap piece of very heavyweight watercolour paper. Normally I stretch my watercolour paper. As you can see on this board, I've got the brown gummed tape around the edges. But this is very heavyweight. It's £300. And I'm just using some masking tape to affix it to the board. Plus it's very small, so it's less likely to warp anyway. I'm not sure of the exact size. It's something like 6x8 or 8x10, something like that. So I'm just putting some masking tape all the way around just to make sure it doesn't move around. And if it does warp, it'll flatten down, but I doubt it. Doubt very much if it'll warp, even though I'm using a bit of wet in wet. In fact, the technique I'm using is mostly the wet in wet technique with some dry work on top. So I've had this yearning to paint some feathers. Oh, here's my watercolour palette. I love this one. It's great. I'm just going to wet it with a spray just to soften up the watercolours. Although I did that a bit in advance, so they should be fairly soft by now. And the colours, I'm going to clean out a well, but the colours I'm mostly going to use are ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a warm gamboge yellow. Just clearing that well out, I'm going to be mixing some darker colours in there, a sort of grey purple. Oh, and a brownie mix at one stage as well. You'll see as the painting goes along. to wipe out the excess water from the edges as well just so I don't get in a muddle with it all as you can see I've got some dots of color on the edges as well there it is so I pop that to the side and uh, the brushes I'm going to use I'm going to use a hake and I'm going to use a couple of round brushes I'm going to turn it sideways I'm going to do the drawing first I did consider oh here's the brushes but I also use a larger one as I get going, actually. So with just an ordinary pencil, I'm just going to sketch in the shapes of the feathers. Feathers are very easy to draw. They're basically a leaf shape with, you know, notches and feathery bits at the bottom. So my plan is to fill the entire page with three simple feather shapes. I'm trying to get them placed equally that's too far to the right I'm just moving this that's the spine I start off with the spine of the feather and also I'm thinking compositionally, what I've got is the on the left hand side I've got the feather po pointing in and on the very right hand side I've got the feather pointing slightly in as well. But the one in the middle doesn't matter which way it points. So that's how they're going to look and I just need to go in and, and add the details like where the notches are and things like that. I'm pressing slightly heavier with the pencil at this stage. fluffy bits at the bottom so that's the sort of idea I'm just reinforcing the spine there and I'll do the same with the next two
just rubbing off the bits that um, I don't want there. Tidying up the tip of that one, that's better. Growing in a slightly more dynamic shape there. Right, now I'm using some of the, now what's it called, frisket type stuff. Now I do this, but it doesn't work actually. I think it's lost its stickiness. So basically um, what I do is I lay it down and I cut round the shape of the feather. But as I say, this is rather pointless because it didn't work. <laughs> I've had this roll for ages. So I think what I would do in future is just roughly put on some uh, either very light masking tape or something like washi tape that's easy to remove. To be honest, it doesn't have to cover the entire feather. I just wanted to protect the feather from the what's happening next. You'll see in a minute what I was trying to do. So they're on. And now I've got some paint and I'm going to make some fun splashes at the base of the feathers was my idea. So that's one splash. I'm just doing a splash per colour actually. So that's the ultramarine blue, quite a watery splash. And that's the alizarin crimson. Just dabbing it off the, um, the frisket there. And now some of the warm yellow. Just one splash of that. So now they're dry. It took a while. <laughs> These are the, this is the larger brush I've got, and I've used this mostly for the entire painting. First of all, I'm wetting the entire feather. Today's a very warm day, so it's going to dry very quickly. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to work wetted wet. So I'm going to drop in some of the blue. Just a little dab of yellow at the top there. And a little bit more blue at the tip. And the next one, ooh, I'm going to wet. Didn't want that blue in the water there. Couldn't get the blue off the brush for some reason. Now it's just clean water. So I'm wetting it again. I'm doing the same thing. Wetting the feather. As you can see at the bottom of these feathers, the frisket didn't work and I've got these splashes running into it. Now I didn't really want that to happen. So when I do another one, which I will, I'll try a different technique. I also rather wish I'd used something to protect the spine of the feathers. Now I'm going in with some alizarin crimson, dropping that in and letting it flow. Wetting the final one here now. This one's going to have more of a brownie colour to it. So I'm going to use some burnt sienna mixed in with the alizarin crimson. Makes a lovely colour. Making sure it's wet. See, that's the burnt sienna and the alizarin crimson colours mixed. I love it. Makes quite a nice fleshy colour. I'm just going to dab these on. I 
I'll let that dry a little bit. Now I'm working on the first one. It's dried a bit more and I'm going to draw in. It has some stripes. So while it's still slightly damp, I'm adding the a darker blue in again. This time I'm using the smaller brush for these details. And I like it being wet because it softens all the edges. And if it dries, I will go in and soft the edges, soften the edges myself later by just um, brushing over with some wet, with a wet brush. Touching up my little feathery bits at the bottom. Adding a few darker spots in the stripes along the spine and along the edge. And I'm going to pull that darker colour along. There we go. Now this one has dots, so I'm going to add some dots in. Got a splash there, I'm just getting rid of that. I'm just tidying up a bit at the bottom. What I would have liked to have done really is have some lighter, lighter bits down at the bottom, but because the splashes have been a bit too intense, I've had to go over with darker, but that's okay. It gives them a bit of grounding anyway. Softening those dots there. Going over this with some more blue to darken it and to soften the stripes that I put on. Right, I've let it dry a little bit. I had many interruptions when I was working on this. Uh, I'm just tightening up some of the areas now. Adding in some more of the dots. Now I'm going to work in the third feather. No, I'm not. Oh, this is where I decide to try and lift out some of the spine of the feathers. Now, this is where I realised really what I should have done is gone in with something to keep the white of the feathers. I could have gone in with various resist methods. Masking fluid at the beginning would have been best. I do have some, but I've had it for a while. I don't know if it's any good. So I'm just doing some lifting off. This is a lifting off brush. Uh, by I think it's Michael Palmer. I'll check that and put the details in the bottom. It's perfect for this job. I love it. In fact, I love that brush entirely for all sorts of things. It's a synthetic. But it's got a slightly hard bristle than what you normally use for watercolours. So you can see the spine now where I've lifted out. Luckily, I was able to lift out those. I'll just, I just tested the temperature then to see how wet it was. So now what am I going to do? Oh yes, I'm just going to go along the edge of the spine 
with a darker colour. So you've got the light of the spine and then the dark shadow. Reinforcing some of the dots. I'm softening the edges here, they're a bit hard. That's better. And I'm doing the same along the spine of the blue feather. Just gives you that bit of dimensionality. If that's a true word, I think I might have made that up. Because the spine on a feather causes a ridge. And now it looks more like a ridge. I've turned the board upside down because I've not got my hand then in the wet paint. Softening those edges as well. Now finally getting to work on the third one. <laughs> it's been a bit neglected. I'm adding some purple in this area. But it is mostly brown. Wetting this part and then I'm going to drop in some more colour. I'll try to cover up the fact that I had a splash there make it more part of the feather that's what painting's all about fixing your mistakes and adding some dots in this area here and up there i must add that these feathers are, aren't real feathers they're made up <laughs> i may have to buy some actual real feathers to use I love the way the colours flow when you're working wet in wet. It is my favourite method. Well, I always start off wet in wet and then I tighten up with dry on top later on. And sometimes I go in with pencil as well, coloured pencils. And in fact, I do go in with ink tents later, in, later on in this, just for some smaller areas. I'm reinforcing the spine on this. Now the colour I'm using is more of the brown colour which is burnt sienna and alizarin crimson and perhaps a touch of the purple as well to darken it. I'm 
lifting up a bit of area there and there and that little bit there. As I say, I'm going to be doing some more feather paintings. Let me know if you'd like to see them. I may just do them quietly by myself, uh, but I will be improving on what I've done here with some other ideas that I've generated as I've worked on this. This is just my trial piece. I did wonder whether to share it because I know it's not perfect. But I'd like to show... I've, I've decided I'm going to show my mistakes as well as my successes because that's what life is like, isn't it? It's not always hunky-dory all the time. And as I say, I learned a lot doing this. It's been a while since I've done a watercolour painting, actually. It must be a good couple of months. And now I'm going in with an ink-tense pencil. I started off with black and didn't like it, so I dug out my colour pencils and I'm going for a dark blue and later on I dig out a brown as well so I'm just going around the edges just accentuating some areas I'm not going to overdo it Adding some more dots in here. Targeting some of these feathery bits so they stand out better. They were a bit lost against that background there. That's better looking a bit more realistic now. digging out one of my browns as I felt some areas on these needed tidying up the feathery bits weren't looking pointy enough so I'm just going in with a sharp pencil I do love these ink tents Just working my way around, tidying up a few bits. Reinforcing some of the dots on this feather here where they've dissolved a bit too much. Lifting off some of the excess colour and using it elsewhere. I think I'm nearing, I'm nearing the end of the painting. I'm beginning to fiddle, so that says to me the time. I'm nearly at the end. Quite often at this stage, I will walk away and not look at it for a while and then come back. And if there's anything that needs to be doing, I will notice. But no, I feel this is the end. So I'm going to call this done. Take off the tape. I've learnt a lot doing this, so when I do my next feathers painting, 
Any issues that I had with this will be resolved, <laughs> she said optimistically. <laughs> so there we have it. I'm really pleased with this painting. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's only little as you can see. There we go. Let me know if you've enjoyed watching this. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.